Hello there. We are going to take a look at uh, Cerebral Router. Uh, we've been working hard on this and it's really been a team effort. I've gotten a lot of help from um, a couple of guys on the, the Gitter uh, channel. Uh, Brian and Garth has really made a great effort to, to, to make this release. Uh, now, we haven't really tried to build a Cerebral Router. Um, it's actually, uh, I've actually been thinking about routing in general. So the Cerebral router is based on two different packages called address bar and URL mapper. So address bar is, is like the core um, that can be used on many different projects. And URL mapper is um, a project that uses address bar to do traditional routing. The thing is that I think we need to think about URL changes a bit differently. So I will just go through this presentation and we will have a look at those ideas. Um, okay, let's get going. Uh, the cerebral architecture looks something like, well, it looks like this. <laughs> uh, it's a view layer and that can be Angular or uh, React. And then we have the controller layer, which is cerebral. Cerebral is the entity that um, is the controller layer. And this controller layer can talk to the server and we have these signals with their actions and stuff like that. And we also have the model layer where state is uh, stored. So the question is, how does a router fit in with this architecture? And if we take a look at a traditional router, it would look something like this. And the thing that's happening now is that the router um, kind of swallows the view layer. It wraps the view layer, meaning that whenever the URL changes, it just dives straight into the view layer and does changes to the views, what views to be displayed. Uh, and this is a bad idea because now these are state changes, as if you did some other state change. Um, but, it, but it's not part of the model layer, and it's not part of the controller either. So Cerebral loses control of these changes. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, another thing is that very often you want to get some data from the server before these views are switched. Uh, but the router has to know about this, so now the router has to do these um, uh, AJAX requests to the server and get those responses so it knows when to do the switch. But this response you get from the server, you also want this to be stored uh, in your state store. So now the router also has to talk to a controller layer or the model layer directly. Um, and the thing is that we already have concepts for handling this. We have the view layer talking to the controller layer, uh, saving state in the model layer, and the router should really be part of that same flow. Um, so uh, what I uh, have been thinking about is how we, can uh, how we can separate URL changes from routing logic. So address bar, uh, the address bar project is a project that just kind of converts the address bar to a normal input. You can listen to changes on it and you can set the value of it. Um, so that is like handling URL changes. And there's no routing logic there at all. It's just listening to URL changes and setting the URL, just like you would with any input in your application. And then we have this URL mapper uh, project, which just takes a string. And uh, by going through some URL definitions, it will trigger different functions. Um, and this um, lets you put your router um, inside your application and it works more like a view, uh, more than anything really. And you can, you can like uh, use address bar and URL mapper yourself and include it in, in Cerebral or whatever project and do manual routing. Uh, but we have also decided to create a Cerebral router because now that we have this separation, we can do some really awesome stuff. Uh, so what we're going to do now is take a look at the project and we're going to play around with 
with the router and we are going to take a look at what, what we're now able to do. Okay, um, so I, ha I have a small application here uh, and this application uh, just has a home page and I can jump to, uh, I can click home here and we can see a signal called home opened and it just sets the title and sets the page. If I hit messages, uh, a few more things are happening. I trigger a messages open signal and we're still setting a title and a page, but we're also uh, loading some messages and setting those messages and, and stuff like that. If I click a message, we have a third signal called message open and uh, it just loads up the message and, and sets it. Uh, now, as you can see, there are no URL changes here and we're going to do something about that. Uh, but first, let's just take a quick look inside our components and the app here. So uh, this is um, like the, the main uh, structure of the page, which are these two links and the title. Um, and as you can see, I have a, a, a uh, tags here, but I just have an on click uh, event and it triggers the signal directly. So there are no URLs being triggered here at all. We're just triggering signals. And this is really interesting because now we have kind of like built our application and it's work, it works just fine, but we want some URLs um, uh, to be part of, of this experience. Uh, so what we're going to do now is introduce the router. So I have the router right here. And what we're going to do is and pass in the controller uh, because the router needs to know about the controller to save some some state related to the URL and it also needs access to the signals. So what we want to do here is define the home uh, route and that should uh, trigger the home opened um, signal. And we also want messages and that should trigger messages open and we also want messages ID, and that should run message open. And we also want to start the router as we load the page. So we just start it like that. Okay, so let's save that now and see what happens when the application refreshes now. So what happened now is that it ran the home open signal because we're on the on the uh, on the root uh, route. <laughs> Um, but if I hit messages now, we can see that it still just runs the signal, uh, but we also have the URL. So we kind of like bind a URL to a signal. Um, what to take notice of here is that we see that uh, an action is actually injected to these signals. So it actually saves the URL inside the state store. Um, uh, and, and then it just runs the rest of, of the actions. So let's uh, go to this dynamic URL. And as we can see, uh, it also handles uh, dynamic URLs. And so this is really interesting. Mm. So what we're going to do now is just check uh, something. Um, we are going to pass in a third argument and that is only hash and set it to true. So what happens now is that all normal URLs uh, will trigger as normal. They will not um, be picked up by the cerebral router. Uh, but if we use, um, but as we use hashed URLs, those, um, uh, those, well, what I mean to say is that normal URLs will trigger as normal natively, but hash URLs will be picked up by the cerebral router. And as we can see here, now we have the hash on the URL. And if I click messages, we have uh, messages and I can click a single message. Okay, so this is clicking around in the interface, but what if I reset now and I go directly to a message? The thing is that now we see that the signal actually triggered, message opened. But since our initial implementation required us to go to messages first before we could trigger message, uh, the message open signal. 
but that is not the case anymore. Now we can actually trigger that signal directly. So what we have to make sure of now is that whenever we trigger message to open now, we also want to run this signal. Uh, but we do not point to the signal. We just reuse uh, messages open. We just reuse the actions. And um, let me just show you now if we refresh here and I will go to messages zero directly. And as we can see, now everything worked uh, as expected. And the really good thing now is that since we reuse the actions, we will see this in the debugger too. So now uh, going to a message just indicates a lot more in the debugger because we are running like two different action chains. But it gives you a really, really good overview of what is going on to create this UI. And as you can see, it's quite complex. The, the application is really simple, but building web applications is really, really complex. And you have a lot of stuff happening as you do these uh, state changes. So it's really important to have a good concept of, uh, of displaying that information. Um, okay, uh, what I also wanted to show you is that if I now go to, uh, I only have three messages here. So if we go to messages five, we can see that this message does not seem to exist. Um, so I, I have logic for handling uh, this kind of stuff and let's reset that and let's take a look at uh, fallback so very often you need to um, you the user might go to URLs that doesn't exist so uh, with the cerebral router or actually the URL mapper project you can use a star and this star is going to be bound to invalid URL routed, let's call it that, uh, controller signal invalid URL routed, and we're going to trigger a signal here called uh, invalid URL routed, routed, like that. I think that was the name of it, invalid URL, yes it is. Okay. So let's save this now. Um, and it refreshes and let's go to message uh, five instead. And this is invalid. So what happened now is that it couldn't find this um, URL. So it just displays whatever I wanted to, to happen in regards of uh, a wrong URL. And we can take a quick look at that signal now. Uh, invalid URL routed and what it does is just setting the title and setting uh, the page So now you see how easy it is to Just develop your application the way you want it to be and then you can hook on URLs After you're done implementing or you can do it right away uh, and you can do all your planning around URLs, but the thing is that uh, now it gives a lot more flexibility um, because you can trigger signals by, by going to a URL, but you can also change the URL by triggering a signal. And this is really, really, really great. And actually there's one more thing I wanted to show you. Uh, I wanted to show you that, of course, you can still just use a URL. So let's head into the app here. And let's change this on click to just be a href. And since we're using hashes, we want to indicate that here. Um, if I was not using hashes, I can just do this. Okay. Uh, let me save that. Um, let's refresh here. Oh, did I type something wrong? Oops. Uh, that shouldn't be there. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, let's reset. And now if I click messages, this still works. It updates the URL and it triggers the signal. But for example, if I click a message, that is directly triggering a signal, but the URL is still 
updated. Okay, I think I made my point clear now. Um, this is uh, basically what I wanted to show you. Um, please check out the, the router. And as I said, if you have an application already without a router, you can just put it in there and start binding it to different signals. So thanks for listening and I hope you enjoy the new router.